This is a demonstration of a digital Galton board implemented on a RP2040 microcontroller. Uh, it's actually parametrized and has some interesting features that I'll show in a moment, but before I do that, I can talk through some of the hardware that you're looking at uh, here on the right on the breadboard. So what you're seeing is an RP2040 on a Pi Pico W in this case, though we aren't actually using any of the W features. Uh, this RP2040 communicates out to a DAC, shown here, a digital to analog converter, which then communicates out to some speakers, or in our case, into a microphone input, so that we can listen to audio that this synthesizes. Uh, the RP2040 is also hooked up to a button, which you can see here, and a potentiometer that you can see here. And this button and potentiometer form a simple user interface for uh, changing some of the parameters associated with this Galton board. What you're seeing on the screen here, this is um, the, the other thing that the RP2040 is hooked up to is a VGA cable. That VGA cable is driving a uh, VGA capture card. So this allows for us to see on the screen what appears on a VGA. So you can see a, repre a digital representation of a Galton board, and there's a single ball sort of bouncing through this board. And uh, if I unmute, you'll be able to hear that each time the ball strikes a new peg, there's a little sound generated. That sound's actually generated by means of a DMA channel communicating out to the SPI DAC. And then down at the bottom, you can see that there's a histogram forming. Um, that histogram is normalized to the amount of space that exists between the bottom of the VGA and the bottom of this Galton board. And then up in the screen, you can see a few different metrics. Um, the total particles dropped every time a new ball falls through the bottom of this board. That number increments. The total number of active particles, that is to say the number of balls falling through the Galton board, is a parameter that we can change. And you can see that right now it's one because there's one ball falling through the board. Bounciness, that's another parameter that I'll demonstrate, but it essentially describes um, how much energy is lost each time the ball strikes a new peg. Gravity, how hard it's being pulled down, and then there are a few other parameters that aren't represented on the screen, but that uh, I can change via a serial interface that I'll show in just a moment. So um, I can demonstrate this user interface. So by means of this button, if I push this button, you can see that the first parameter that it selects is active particles. And by means of this little potentiometer, I can adjust the number of active particles um, as high as I would like, really. The, uh, at a certain point, we will no longer be able to meet the 30 frames per second deadline. Uh, experimentation shows that for this implementation, that happens at somewhere around 1,800 balls or so. Um, so you can see that now I have 257 active particles falling through this Galton board. Each one of those particles, they, they, um, their collisions are modeled by collision physics, though I don't have any particle-particle collisions modeled at the moment. So that is to say that the balls can pass right through one another, but they all bounce off of the pegs according to, to collision physics. And then down at the bottom, as expected, you see the, um, the binomial distribution forming, which with this many rows in the Galton board starts to really approach, uh, approach a Gaussian distribution by the central limit theorem. So that's kind of fun, and in fact, I can, I can, well, let me see here. If I turn this potentiometer back, I can uh, increase this even further. To 500 particles, and I can take a shortcut by way of a serial interface as well, if I want to. Um, and uh, let's see. could set the particles to, say, a thousand. But let's see, I'll set it, I'll set it to a number that, um, for which the 30 frame per second deadline won't be able to be satisfied, and we can see what that looks like. So if I set this to, for instance, uh, oh, 2,000. Well, it's actually still meeting the deadline there. Let me set it even higher. Set it to 3,000. And you can see it freezes up. Uh, I can no longer meet that. Just restart this. Uh, some other parameters that we can play with. Let's see, I'm just going to set the number of particles up to some bigger than one, but not huge number. I don't know, something around maybe 50. 
Uh, we can also adjust the bounciness. So if I turn this way down, you'll see that um, the balls do not bounce off of the pegs at all. They, in effect, they lose um, almost all their energy upon striking each peg. If I adjust this such that it's higher, you'll see that the balls get much bouncier. And what's kind of interesting is to change these parameters and then observe how the histogram that forms at the bottom changes. And so you can see that this is no longer forming a binomial approaching Gaussian distribution. It's forming some other distribution, which actually looks much more uniform. But in any case, let me set this back to uh, something around 0.5 or so. Another parameter I can change is gravity. So if I increase gravity considerably, you'll see that the, uh, the balls fall more quickly from one row to the other row, and they don't bounce as much. If I decrease gravity, you'll see that they fall less quickly, and also there's a little bit more bouncing because they aren't fighting against as much gravity. And what is kind of fun is to turn this way down, uh, or even to turn this... Oops, hold on a second. It's kind of fun to turn gravity completely off. So now there's no gravity at all. I can increase it just a little bit, and they start to fall back down. Slowly, slowly. And then I can increase it back up to a reasonable number. The other thing that you'll notice, perhaps, as I'm adjusting these parameters, is um, every time a parameter changes, the total number of particles dropped, shown up here in the corner, uh, right now it's 40-ish, uh, that gets reset to zero, and also the histogram at the bottom gets reset to zero. The motivation for that is what, what I think is fun about this demo is to adjust these parameters and observe how those distributions at the bottom change for different parameter values. So every time I change a parameter value, I want to reset the distribution so that I can see how it changes. Um, so let's see, I'm just going to set gravity back up to a, a little bit of a higher number. 0.75, I think, is where it was, 0.75-ish. Um, and then I have some other parameters that I can adjust uh, by means of a serial interface that I don't have set up on the button potentiometer interface. For instance, um, let me see here. I can adjust the number of rows in the Galton board. I can do as little as one row. I guess this is two rows. Can actually do as little as. Um, oops, sorry, I did the wrong button. So let's put this back to about 100 particles, and let's put the number of rows to very small number, one peg. And you can see that, as you expect, the distribution that we're forming is, you know, 50% left, 50% right. Um, but indeed, I can increase this to uh, any number of pegs that I really care to, and. Again, the motivation for this was to observe the distributions at the bottom, and it's it's kind of interesting to increase the number of rows in the Galton board and observe the binomial distribution forming at the bottom approach a Gaussian. So I'm just going to put that back to, um, this is 17 rows. So let's see, I can adjust uh, the number of rows, I can adjust the number of balls, of course, gravity, um, I can adjust the radius of the balls. So here I just made all the balls smaller. I could also, of course, make them bigger. And you'll see that they have trouble fitting through the gaps now and sort of tend to slide. So I'll set that back to what it was. I can similarly adjust the uh, radius of the pegs. So let's see, I'll make the pegs smaller. could make them bigger, and I'll put them back to where they were. I can adjust the horizontal spacing between the pegs, so let me just do that. Um, let's see, I think right now it's set to 20 or so, so if I do this it should get narrower. Make it 
quite narrow if I care to. And let me just set that back to what it was. I think it was 19. 19-ish. Uh, and then I can similarly adjust the vertical spacing. So I can shrink it in the vertical direction if I care to. Let me put that back to what it was. I think that was 20. And then, of course, I can adjust the, the uh, parameters that I already showed here, just for fun. It's kind of interesting to... Um, I'm going to make the total number of particles falling through the board quite large. Let's make it like 1,500. It starts to look like a fluid to me. And then let's turn off gravity. And they all start to float around. Anything else to mention about this? I don't think so. Uh, 